In this tutorial, we will learn how to create an animation for a burning electric wire like this. In addition to the fire and sparks, there is one more thing here. If you look closely, you will see that the burnt out part of the wire is turning into black. This small little feature is actually very important, it is making this scene very realistic. So we will also learn how to do that. Let us first start with a blank new file. Delete this default cube, then go to the add menu, and add one bezier curve. Enlarge it by a factor of 3. We will create our wire, based on this bezier curve. So, go to the add menu, and under curve, add one bezier circle. Resize it by, 0 0.01. Then, select this Bezier curve. Go to this Curve tab. Scroll down to the section called Geometry and expand it. We will get a bevel section here. Switch over to the Object tab, and in the Target object, select the Bezier circle. So, our wire is ready, you can further subdivide it, or change its shape if you like. Now, this is the outer part of the wire, and we need an inner part also, which will be complete black, and will be visible after the wire is burnt out. So, make a copy of this Bezier curve and just paste here. As you can see, a duplicate Bezier curve is now added here. But in addition to this, we also got a copy of our Bezier circle. This second Bezier curve, which is the inner core, should be little thinner than the outer part of the wire. The size of this second curve is controlled by the size of this copy of the Bezier circle. So, let us reduce the size of this second Bezier circle to point 007. Now, if we hide the outer part, you can see the inner core, which is little thinner. We can see the inner core here, and if we unhide the other one, we get the outer part of the wire. We need to create some material for the wire. First, turn on the rendered view mode. And, go to the world tab. We can reduce the intensity of the background light, little bit. Then, go to the materials tab. Create a new material. And select any color, say red color for the wire. Now hide this, and select the inner core, and create a new material for the core. Let us assign a complete black color to this. So, we have the inner core here, in black, and the outer wire, is in bright red color. We will now add the fire, which will travel through this curve. So go to the add menu, and add one, UV sphere. Let us scale it down by 0.1. Okay, we want this sphere to travel from this end, all throughout the wire, to this end. We can actually verify the direction of this curve. For that, select the curve, and then, go to the edit mode. From this little drop-down, we can enable the normals. As you can see, the arrows are pointing towards this direction. Just in case you want to reverse this direction, you can do that with this switch direction option. In our case, we are good already. So, we will now bind this sphere to the wire, which is our curve. Go to the Object Constraint tab, and add one, Follow Path Constraint. In the Target field, select the first Bezier curve we added. Then, select the Follow Path option and click on this Animate Path button. If you now start the animation, the fire point will smoothly travel through the wire. But it is traveling quite fast. In order to make it more realistic, we should slow down its speed. So, select the wire and go to this curve tab again. Scroll down to the section called Path Animation. Under this, we have the number of frames. We can increase it further. Let us make it 250 to match with our animation length. Now if you go to the first frame and run the animation, you will see that the fire is moving along the curve at a slower speed. So, probably we can rename this sphere. It is going to create the sparks, let us simply call it fire. And as this fire point travels through the wire, we want the burnt out part of the wire to be in black. So basically, we need to make that part of the outer layer transparent, so that its inner core get visible through this. For that, select the outer part, and then, split the screen into half. Let us open the shader editor in the left side panel. We need to set up suitable shader nodes to manipulate the transparency. By default, we just have one principled BSDF node here. We need transparency, so go to the add menu and add one transparent BSDF shader. And to mix these two, add one mix shader. Place it between these two nodes. Let us make some room here. 
Please connect the two BSDF nodes to the input sockets of this mix node. And to control this FAC parameter, we need to add few more nodes here. First, go to the Add menu and add one Texture Coordinate node. We need to pick up the coordinate for this wire with respect to this sphere. So here in the Object field, select the Fire object. Then add another node which is called Separate XYZ node. And we also need to add one Math node here. That's all. Now, connect the object output of the texture coordinate to this separate XYZ node. We need to then decide which axis to use here. For our wire or this curve, we need to use just the Y output. If you have a complicated design with many bands or turns, you may need to set up a complex tree here. But for a simple curve like this, just the Y axis is sufficient. Let us change this math function from add to less than type. Then connect the Y value to its value input. Finally, connect its output to the FAC input of the mix shader. And we are done with the shader part. If you now play the animation, you will see how this part of the curve is getting black, the cover is getting transparent dynamically, exactly as we wanted. So, we can now close this section altogether. Let us run it once more. Our basic setup is ready, we just need the fire and spark here along with this little sphere. And for that, we will make use of the particle system in Blender, the particles will be generated from this running sphere. You can also change the position, or the orientation of this wire, it will still work. Let us change its orientation, and test it. Just to share with you, I discovered this nice trick, when I was making the tutorial for the bomb. You will see in the intro section of that video, how this wire was used to trigger the bomb. So, let us play the animation and verify. Yes, the section already traversed by the fire, is getting dark, successfully. We will now add the sparks. So, stop the animation, and go to the first frame. To add the particle system here, for the sparks, select this fire object. Then go to this particles tab. Click on this plus button to create a new particle system for this object. With all these default values, let us run the animation once. We can see that the particles are almost like falling down. We need to change few things, so, expand this velocity section. Change this normal value to 10 meter per second. Let us also change this randomize factor to 5. Now, if we run it again, we can see that the particles are spreading in all directions, which is good, but they are going too far. So, let us change few other things here. You can change this number of particles to maybe 7000. Then, decrease this lifetime value to just 1. Finally, change this end frame number to 250, same as our scene length. Then run it again. We can see that the particles are now coming out just like fire sparks, but we need to set up their shape and an appropriate color. So go to the add menu and add one icosphere. Scale it down by 0.3. The particles will take the shape and color of this icosphere. We will link them, but before that, let us set up some nice material for this. While the sphere is selected, please go to the Materials tab, and create a new material. Here, we need to use an emission type shader for this object. Change the color to orange, or anything you like. And change the strength to 300. Then go to the Render Properties, and enable this Bloom option. Now, select the fire object, which is the source of these particles. Go to the Particles tab, and scroll down all the way below, to this Render section. Expand it, and change this Render as Field, from Halo, to Object Type. And in the Instance object, select the Icosphere we have added. For the Viewport display, please ensure that the Rendered option is selected. You can hide this Icosphere in the Render, but don't delete it, because it is now being used by these particles. We should also hide this fire object, but there is a catch here. If we hide this or make it a zero size object, the particles will disappear as well. So instead of doing that, we can just resize the fire object to a bare minimum value, and it won't be noticeable. Now, let us play the animation again. So, the fire is looking nice, it is moving along the wire just like what we expected. 
You can change the color of these sparks by changing the icosphere material. That's all for today. You can use this technique in many scenarios, along with a sound effect, to make it more realistic. I hope you like this tutorial. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.